Arthur, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theatre. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. It's just, I'd like to have been informed. You'll have to get used to it, Mr. Holmes. Miss Caitlin is growing up. Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will... Brains. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> Wilde's already making himself at home. Wilde truly has a perfect disguise kit. Do actors really need all this? This must be grease paint. I use the same brushes for makeup. <laughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I forgot my hat. Father? I am just checking, um. You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it. Uh... Might be. Uh, Practising my disguises. You know me. <sighs> no! Don't, don't touch that! No! No! Ah! Mrs. Hudson. With our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father. 
Although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together. But then father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha! A love letter! Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr...? Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. Mr. Holmes, what do you think about the letter on the table? Do you think it might help? This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Good quality paper, quite smooth. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. <laughs> The stepfather's letter is also typewritten.
quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Mm -hmm. I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm -hmm. Take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. This letter has a defect. One more letter with a defect. It's the same letter, with the same defect in both instances. Another letter match with the same defects. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. What else can I tell you? I think this case is fairly obvious, don't you, Mr. Holmes? You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. 
But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He found a crook by the name of Mr. Hosmer Angel. He was paid to make you fall in love and promise your devotion, whereupon he would disappear. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. <laughs>